Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my May 2021 book haul. That being said, the majority of the books that I have in this haul, I actually acquired in April. <laughs> I just ended up uh, saving them for this month because I already had enough books to show last month, and I'm trying not to buy too many books, you know. I'm trying to do a good thing here. <laughs> but basically, about a month ago, um, I went in person for the first time in over a year in person to do book buying at a bookstore. <laughs> I'm so excited I can barely speak straight. <laughs> um, there's this uh, local used bookstore, Capitol Hill Books in Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. It's uh, one of those row houses that's just stuffed to the gills with used books. And they decided uh, one of the things that they would offer is um, individual book buying sessions. Uh, basically, you know, they're, they were mostly closed to the public. I think they still mostly are, although, of course, things are starting to open up a little bit more now. But, uh, but for most of the recent past, they've been largely closed to the public, trying to figure out a way to stay afloat. And uh, one of the things they decided, uh, once it was okay to do so, was to offer a 50-minute uh, individual shopping spree. So you get to sign up for a 50-minute session, you know, with uh, one of the employees in the store with you. It's just you and them, and you're, everyone's masked. And you have 50 minutes to shop and, you know, purchase your books and uh, go home <laughs> with brand spanking new reading material. But anyway, uh, my MO when I go used book shopping is that I have this really long list of books that I've been putting on my TBRs. <laughs> you know, anytime a book catches my fancy, I put it on, you know, one of my TBRs and I have a list of all those books because the list is so long, I, I try to only buy books from that list and not just, you know, do browse buying. <laughs> so I had this long list of books on my phone and I'm scrambling around in the, the fiction uh, section upstairs. And I have them organized uh, alphabetically by author's last name, and I start with the A's, and I get through the S's before uh, I have to go. <laughs> Which I'd say is a pretty good uh, swath of uh, the alphabet. Uh, and I did a really good job, too, of finding books on the list. Usually when I go to Capitol Hill Books, or had in the past, I'd be lucky to find one book that's already on my TBR list, and this time I found five. <laughs> so it was very exciting, and now I'll stop rambling and uh, show them to you. <laughs> The first one is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I've slowly been uh, falling more and more uh, in love with Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, or at least uh, I really enjoyed Americana, and I very recently read her short stories with my book club, and those went over really well too, so now I'm trying to find the rest of her collection, and what do you know, one of them uh, was in this bookshop, and now I have it here. Adichie is a Nigerian-American uh, novelist, and uh, I believe this uh, novel, unlike Americana, primarily takes place in Nigeria, so looking forward to it. Next, well, I almost missed this one, uh, you know, with all of the nooks and crannies that I was searching through, you know, I <laughs> almost didn't find it, but then I did, and that's exciting in and of itself. This is Klotzvog. It is by Margarita Kemlin. Uh, recently translated by Lisa C. Hayden. This is a book that takes place in the 1950s Soviet Union from a Jewish perspective, and it was originally written in Russian uh, and only recently translated. So that just has that veneer of excitement of, uh, you know, getting my English reading hands onto <laughs> a uh, recently accessible piece of fiction, and it's especially about a piece of Jewish history, uh, and this one certainly interests me about what it was like in the Soviet Union in mid-century. So, we'll see. Next, I'm going to break my rule because technically this was not on my TBR list. This is Half-Life by Gillian Cantor. That being said, I did talk about it uh, in a recent video I did about uh, recently published books that I want to read for this year's Goodread Choice Awards. And so this was on it, and I was so excited to find this. I believe it's an ARC, really, uh, because it just was published uh, within the last year. This is historical fiction that imagines an alternative life for Marie Curie. I think, actually, it juxtaposes uh, Curie's real academic life against um, the possibility that she might have uh, done something more traditionally feminine, like settle down and get married and not have the time to 
pursue her career. So uh, I'll be interested to see the juxtaposition. Returning to my TBR list in Jewish-themed fiction, this is Playing With Fire by Tess Gerritsen. I believe she's probably more of a genre writer than I'm usually reading. That being said, I think my interest in Jewish fiction that I find on the Jewish Book Council website does uh, propel me more into like mystery and thriller and that sort of thing than my usual uh, endeavors on my own would. But anyway, maybe I'll read from the back for this one. In a shadowy antique shop in Rome, Julia Ansel happens upon a curious piece of music, the Incendio Waltz, and is immediately entranced by its unusual composition. The mournful minor key and complex feverish appreggios appear to dance with a strange life of their own. Back in Boston, when Julia plays the notes for the first time, the music has a terrifying and unexplainable effect on her young daughter, who seems violently transformed. Determined to track down the music score's origins, Julia travels to Venice and uncovers a dark secret that not only dates back to the Second World War, but also directly involves a dangerously powerful family who will stop at nothing to keep Julia from bringing the truth to the light. So yeah, like I said, this is kind of mystery thriller. It also is a subgenre of uh, Jewish fiction, I believe, which talks about uh, the arts and the Holocaust, or at least that plays into this. So uh, we'll see what the uh, origin of that uh, strange music is all about. <laughs> and finally, completely continuing on theme here, I have We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. And it is the story of a Jewish uh, European family uh, during World War II. They scattered to the winds in time to, uh, you know, uh, escape the Holocaust. And I believe this novel will track them. Uh, I'm not sure for how long, uh, but uh, it'll track them throughout the years uh, after their dispersal. And hopefully we'll find some reconciliation or a reunion at the end. We'll see. Okay, so that's all of the books I got from Capitol Hill Books, but I have one more book to show you on this book haul. This is About the Night by Anat Talshir, translated from the Hebrew by Evan Fallenberg, which I just got off of A Books, because this was the book that won my booktube spin. The booktube spin was started by Rick McDonnell, where he encouraged us to make a uh, reading list of 20 books that we wanted to get to, and I'll link to my long rambly video about the 20 books I chose down before, and I'll link to the long rambly video of the 20 books I chose down below. But anyway, he did one of those uh, spinny things, I called it, where he pulled up uh, a digital uh, spinner device and put in the numbers 1 through 20, and he came up with number 1, so we all have to read number 1 on our uh, spin list, and this is my number 1. And I suppose I will read from the back again. On a hot summer day in 1947, on a grandstand overlooking Jerusalem, Elias and Lila fall deeply, irrevocably in love. Tragically, they come from two different worlds. Elias is a Christian Arab living on the eastern side of the newly divided city, and Lila is a Jew living on the western side. A growing conflict between their cultures casts a heavy shadow over the region, and thus their burgeoning relationship. Between them lie not only a wall of stone and barbed wire, but also the bitter enmity of two nations at war. Told in the voice of Elias as he looks back upon the long years of his life, About the Night is a timely story of how hope can nourish us, loss can devastate us, and love can carry us beyond boundaries that hold human beings apart. So yeah, this is another one of the Jewish uh, Book Council uh, books that I added to my TBR list. And I do feel like it's an appropriate read for this time, something uh, speaking again of redemption and reconciliation and of uh, people from different sides of conflict, uh, you know, forging a connection, which, uh, which given recent events in Israel can uh, be all the more powerful or hopeful. So uh, we'll have to see uh, how she does with this story, granted from a very different time in Jerusalem's past. So that about covers it for me now. You can find the Goodreads links for all of these books I mentioned listed down below. 
Speaking of Jewish books, we are reaching the end of Jewish American Heritage Month. Uh, so part of me would like to, you know, squeeze in another video about, you know, Jewish books on here. But uh, that being said, uh, I continue to race desperately through the rest of my Booktube Prize reading. Uh, my ballot is due in under a week now. So I think I'm going to hold off on making any more videos here until I can talk about my ballot and my rankings uh, for the nonfiction group C ballot for I'm reading for the quarterfinals, which I should be able to get on here within the next few days, actually, because <laughs> that's uh, when Robert will be posting the results, pending us judges getting our, you know, ballots in. <laughs> I promise I'll make it in time. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm so excited to see how uh, the quarterfinals wrap up for all of us and to see everybody's videos about what they ranked and why they ranked them the way they did. <laughs> in the meantime, I hope the rest of you have also been enjoying the books you've been acquiring and reading uh, in the recent past. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.